Aerial work is like ballet in the air. You have to make it look effortless and beautiful. But it takes tremendous effort and focus, tremendous strength. An aerialist is a person who can be 20, 30, 40 feet above the ground and love it. To be an aerialist, it's really good to have a background in gymnastics. Gymnastics is a great sport for giving your body strength all over, upper body, your torso, your legs. Your whole body has to be strong. And you're also trained as an artist, you're trained as a dancer. You have to have those elements up in the air. You have to be very strong because the only thing that's keeping you up there 90% of the time is your arm strength. You're holding on by your hands. I got you. <laughs> You. The first time I flipped upside down for aerial work, I was hooked because it was—it's just a high that you you can't you can't replace with anything else. <laughs> Flying is just a complete love for me. I was All-American in gymnastics and uh, Eastern Conference champion. When I finished competing in gymnastics, I found the flying trapeze. And when I started doing flying trapeze, I found a thing that I could do for the rest of my life that was as good or better than anything that I had done up until then physically. Flying trapeze is the big rig. Flying trapeze is the one where someone swings from one bar and is caught on the other and there's a big net underneath. All the other aerial work I do doesn't have a net underneath. There is no net. It's just a single apparatus up in the air. We've been working on this project probably for a year and a half now. Um, met Drea in 2002, and she was the one who got me hooked on aerial work. We both were hired to do the share tour. And I was hired to choreograph the aerials and train the dancers how to do aerials and then to be a dancer also. Ooh. Addie took to the aerials right away. She was really excited about it. And she was, she was a natural. I grew up dancing, but then uh, had a knee injury and realized that if I'm going to dance, it's either now or never. So I came to L.A. and I've just really been dancing as a working dancer ever since. And then I fell into this aerial stuff, which is, to me, take, is like the next level of dance. When Ned and I talked to her about doing this role in the film, we started to train the aerials for the film while we were still on tour. So for about the last eight months of the tour, we were, we were starting to map out the aerials that, that you see in the film. If you try to cast a movie and train an actress to do aerials and then have the space and the time, it would take, you know, it would take a year. The aerials was, gonna, was always going to be the easiest part of this movie because we knew, because we had and we had done such foundation work with them. I based this film around these two women, Addie and Drea Weber. I spent some time on the road with them and saw what they were able to do in the air. And I, I thought, there's, there's got to be a way to make a movie out of two beautiful women who know how to do aerials.
I love my character. I love Serena. She has a almost a driving force that she doesn't realize she has. Her character was written a little differently before um, I crossed paths with Ned. It was actually written for somebody else, and they were like, "What if it was more more along um, the guidelines of my background and my history of being adopted and and what that was like and going through those difficulties?" So there's a lot of similarities that are nice because because I feel in my lifetime I've overcome a lot of those difficulties and I've embraced them more so as, as who I am and to be able to express that in, a, in a, part, a character or a movie is very satisfying. <laughs> Focus. Shh. Down in front. Low for this young woman and it's a devastating loss for the American team going into these games. She's our best gymnast, Don. This is tragic. You can see the Jane shoulders this incredible weight of responsibility having been on the track to be an Olympic star and having that fall apart which is an incredible burden so everything about her life kind of becomes about not ever trying to get too far when she finds out that she might not be able to have children it just kind of spirals her back on everything and this person who didn't get any kind of completion in her life. Suddenly brought into this environment where all of her training, her background, her ability, her real skill is all of a sudden good again. She's good. Serena sees her as a person who has a future. She doesn't see her as the person who's disappointed everyone. Okay, you're my hero. You could do porting moves. It's a hand grip. It's like this. Yeah. Do this. Okay, I grab my wrists. See? You hang on to me, I hang on to you. It's solid. Porting is an aerial move that Drea does where she holds one person suspended in the air. And it seemed like a great metaphor for a film about two people who meet, who need each other to bridge a gap in their lives. Jane touches people because she's a massage therapist, but she doesn't get touched, you know and she doesn't get held and supported. What Serena allows to happen, this, this sort of mutual supporting of each other and the trust there, that, that couldn't happen with David and Jane because of their history and because of the, the kind of path that they've gotten themselves on. And the reason why I fall in love with Serena is because I can see a possibility for myself. When you break the physical barrier and when you add that kind of, the kind of trust and exhilaration, all tied up with creative and her spirit coming alive again, this hope for life. That's why Jane falls in love with Serena. And that's why she takes this big leap, because the possibility of having life forward, you know, that's powerful. Uh, 
it's going great today. Yeah. Sure. We just uh, finished a really good scene. We have a really great uh, dance performance that we're about to see. It's going to be very exciting. This is our first dance performance. I don't really want to throw a net in front of the park. That was freaking cool. Might as well see this as the lights come up. And settling. And set. I went to film school at SUNY Purchase, and after being a PA, and then an electrician, and a gaffer, and an assistant editor, I kind of did the rounds in production and post-production. So I thought I should start making movies, because that's, that's what you do in LA. Okay, we're going to go on site. So I started by making small shorts, and uh, I set a goal for myself, um, I would make as many as it took to actually get into a film festival and then to win a film festival. And then if I could do that, then I would feel somewhat ready to make uh, a feature. And, and that all happened. So, <laughs> so uh, now I'm making a feature. Oh, yes it was. <laughs> And cut. <laughs>